All right, YouTube, Repo Man 64. Got space. Or at least that's what I put on in the background. When we fly out of here, we're going to be flying through space. So, um, out here in the secret broadcast cave, I've got some uh, pictures that I took, screenshots, and we'll go through them like we do. Uh, we're like Kevin. Uh, Spinebreaker says this is a very spicy time that we're in right now. <clears throat> the time around Passover, and it's like a really important year. 2024 is 1,993 years after um, Jesus paid for our sins. And so I'm going to go through the uh, I'm going to go through the uh, screenshots and take a look at all that see where we're at all right let's start up here I want to point out I've done this before but since we're right at it I want to point out when God said to Moses this now is the head of your year he did it in Exodus 12 he moved everything back six months but what's weird about the fact that he moved it back six months is that everything matches six months later. So we like to say that uh, Jesus fulfilled all the, the uh, spring feasts, but he didn't fulfill the fall feast. But I think that they're all fulfilled, and the only thing we're left waiting for is the rapture. And I'll show you right now. So March 17th, if you go forward six months, You'll land right here, beginning of the year, changed by God to March 17th. This is the day that Noah removes the covering. This is Noah's new year. Prior to Moses being told by God to uh, change the head of the year, this was the head of the year. But in Exodus 12, he changed it. Later on, after he changed it, he, in Leviticus, calls this day the Feast of Trumpets. It was the same day, but he called it the Feast of Trumpets. He did not call it Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah simply means head of the year. And if you go read in Levit Leviticus where he sets up the Feast of Trumpets, he does call it the seventh month on purpose, intentionally. It's the seventh month and first day, Tishri 1, which equates to September 15, 16. We have an issue because the calendar is supposed to be 364 days long, but the Gregorian is 365, which is why every single year your birthday will not land on the same day. Christmas Day will not land on the same day. It's because they are not adhering. Now, I said this in the last video and somebody think thought they were correcting me, but I said side real day. I did that on purpose so that you could go and Google the word side real. It's sidereal. That's how you actually say it. And I, I already knew how to say it, but I, I said side real intentionally so that you could go Google it. Nobody's going to be able to go Google sidereal, but it's spelled just like it sounds side real day. Sidereal day means that they are taking four minutes a day from the clock and they're adding it back at the end, which is where you get your day and a quarter at the end. If they would simply call the day 24 hours long, none of this would be happening. But they have messed with the calendars, every single one of them, so much since years before Jesus came. 400 years before Jesus came, they forced the new moon calendar on the people. And then uh, 50 years, 40 years before Jesus came comes Julius Caesar. It's called the Julian calendar. And of course, it was wrong. And it started in January and the Gregorian calendar fixed it. It also starts on January 1st, but they had to correct it by 10 and a half days, 11 days. And they, they did that. And that's, that's why that change was made in, in 1582. Even the Gregorian calendar is wrong by 11 seconds a year. And the reason is, is because they will not start the year on the day where Enoch said on this day, the day of equal parts, the day where there are 12 hours a day and 12 hours a night, Jesus also references this. 
when speaking about the day Lazarus died. That's the day Lazarus died. Are there not 12 hours a day? And in fact, there actually are on that day. And when you put it on the timeline and you walk it through, everything that he did and why he did it, you wind up perfectly at the cross on March 30th. If you say the flood occurred on October 31st at nightfall, becoming November the 1st, and you do 150 days later where the water began to recede, you'll again land on March the 30th. So here's my point and what I was trying to point out. March 17th, come down here. September 15th, 16th, because of that extra day. And it is even worse in, the, in a leap year on February the 29th. It makes it in yet another day off, which is what Ecro Symphony found over here. And it happens right here on February 10th, 11th. You have to add another day there. Now, here we have. The beginning of the year and then we find out that jesus was born on september the 30th you go back remember the the time they, they overlay they overlay perfectly because god said this now is ahead of your year everything moved back so what happened six months earlier september the 30th you come back here jesus is on the cross on march the 30th it's perfect this year, the Jews had their calendar correct, where they called these events correctly. They called um, Sukkot, Tabernacles, beginning on September the 30th. Remember, on October the 7th, Israel was invaded. This was Nisan, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tishri 23, October the 8th, at nightfall, is when uh, the last day of Tabernacles ends. That's the last day of tabernacles. This is also the day Jesus was named and circumcised. Very important day. Remember in the Bible, it talks about circumcision quite a bit. And that's the date we have, October the 8th. And so we go back to see what happened six months earlier from October the 8th. And we have April the 10th. Now, wait a second. That's two days off. There's something wrong. That's Thomas in the upper room. But then this year, this solar eclipse happens on April the 8th. That is the overlay. I could not for the longest time. There was a long, there, I had asked about, uh, you, as you know, while I was building this timeline, while I was making this timeline, I have asked many people to find any date that doesn't fit. For example, the flood happens, and 150 days later, he's on the cross. And then in the seventh month, the 17th day, the ark landed on Mount Ararat, meaning to reverse the curse. In the first month, the 17th day, Jesus rose. So it fits. If you say that, for example, if you say that the year begins on the equal Knox, that's fine. You will have to say that the flood did not begin on November the 1st, that it began on November the 4th. It means nothing on any calendar anywhere. If you say the head of the year jumps around with the moon, it won't work at all because the moon does not come in at 30, 30, 31. It does 150 days later will never be the cross. The sliver of the moon calendar never matches ever. It can't. If you say, well, I'm going to start it at the wheat in June. OK, that's fine. Start it at the wheat in June. When was your flood? Oh, that was October 31st. No. If you started in June, then your flood happened in January. Um, your flood began in January. Again, completely out of sync. The entire planet views October 31st and November 1st, All Saints Day, as a catastrophic day. It's in their history. Now, they only had eight people to come off that boat, so it's been by word of mouth and by you know, people talking about it, uh, but they've all held on to it. And on that day is when God flooded the planet. He made judgment on the entire planet on that day. All right. So you can see the six-month overlay. You can see that when Jesus made his, uh, sorry, when uh, the head of the year was, you go six months and it lands perfectly. If you go 10 days, just like over here, you would go from 
the head of the year, September 15th, you go 10 days, you're going to land on, you'll be in the 10 days of awe, and you're going to land on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. That matches to where Jesus rode in on the donkey. That's the triumphant entry. If you go to where Jesus is born on September the 30th, it overlays where with Jesus went to the cross. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. It's in that song that we sing. It's in the Bible. The song came from the Bible. And you see how it cross-references back six months. Because technically, this is where we are. Technically, we've just passed Tishri 1. We've just passed Feast of Trumpets. Technically. In the Day of Atonement, uh, we pass it with the triumphant entry. The next event will be Jesus at 3 o'clock in the afternoon giving up the ghost on the cross, where he says in uh, John, speaking predominantly to the 144,000, it is finished. Where he speaks in Mark and Matthew, speaking predominantly to... The, the, the two books, Mark and Matthew, are speaking predominantly to you, the sleepy church and the Jew. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then in Luke, you see him saying, into thine hands I commend my spirit. They didn't. Jesus didn't say different things up there. He said the same thing, but each one heard what they were going to hear. So, September the 30th, Jesus was born eight days later. On October the 8th, he is circumcised, and nothing matched. That confused me because the circumcision was so important. But in this year, very unique year, 2024, we are seeing a solar eclipse that will cross the United States, making an X, or the Isle of Toph, across the United States. Now we have a match, and that's going to happen two days prior to Thomas in the upper room. So... We now have a match for April the 8th. Perfect match. Um, when you uh, look at this, April Fool's Day, I want you to remember this. April Fool's Day falls perfectly in the center of when Jesus gave up the ghost and when Jesus rose at 3 o'clock in the morning on April the 3rd. Perfectly in the center. Those three days. Um, he rises and he walks around with people he's been witnessing. People witness him walking around during the day and then he disappears. He's gone. Where is he and what is he doing? Where is Jesus at and what is he doing? We have no record in the Bible. But we know that in Leviticus, they have to do this wave sheaf offering. of There's a week of unleavened bread. And he has to do this wave sheaf offering. Jesus rises on Sunday. He says on Sunday... Eight days later, he returns to Thomas in the upper room. He rises at three o'clock in the morning and sticks around till the afternoon. He makes the wave sheaf offering early in the morning on Sunday and returns in the afternoon to Thomas in the upper room through that locked door. He has made intercession for our sins. All right. I wanted to get through that real quick. I've got a lot of cool... Uh, math coming up uh, to show you. Um, having a, a, a brain moment. It, because it's so much. There's so much stuff. It's just, it's a lot of math, and it's it, but you'll see how it ties together. The 1,260 days, the 2,520 days. When you look, this, this, when you, this is why I wanted to put space on here. She's not space. When you look into space, it's infinite, right? As far as we can see, it goes on forever and ever, and it's immense. It's huge. But if you get a uh, microscope, very powerful microscope, you can look deep, deep into things and, and see tiny, tiny, tiny things. God is as has shown us his greatness from the smallest thing to the greatest thing, right? And the same thing happens with what I'm going to show you. What if, and I'm not saying it's the only thing it means, but what if the 1,260 days is 1,260 minutes? What if, I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. What if the 2520 days is 2,520 minutes? 
We'll get to that in just a second. I think it'll blow your mind. Blew mine. It blew my mind. So, all right. Now, so far, as far as we know, now when this event takes place, they are going to sacrifice this red heifer. We know that Jesus was the tenth one. We had some. I had some people in the going, but the cows were all female. We're the bride. We're male. Don't get hung up on male and female. That's that literally is the least of our problems. Um, the 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 cow that will be sacrificed. I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that it will occur on Saturday, March thirtieth, at three p.m. At this same exact moment that they crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. At that exact moment that Jesus gave up the ghost, it said again, it is finished in John and into thine hands I commend my spirit in Luke. On that exact moment, I believe is when they're going to do it. But when are we going to find out about it? Do you think we're going to find out about it the second they do it? No. Do you think they're going to tell us before they do it? No. They're going to talk, oh, it's going to happen next week or next month. Oh, the cows aren't old enough. It's going to happen a year from now. No, we're going to wait till September. Now, they're in a rush. They've already lost two of these cows because they are not qualified anymore. Those other three cows are not going to last until September. They are going to sacrifice one of these cows, burn it up on an altar. I had somebody make a comment. I need to go to Israel to save these cows. Why? <laughs> they are literally ushering in the rapture. You, you don't want to say that. You don't, you don't want to make that statement. So this day, ironically, you can find it, is called Shabbat Parah. It is now 5784. That did happen on March 17th. It became 5784. They are going to make a phenomenal blunder like they did when they crucified Jesus. The Bible, the Old Testament, told them this event was going to take place, and they could not even see what they were doing. They couldn't even see it. The same thing for the past 2,000 years, we have said that Jesus was the one that you guys crucified, and they, they won't hear it. They won't see it. So they're going to sacrifice this red heifer. Um, I believe it's going to be March 30th at 3 p.m. I think we're going to find out about it in a day or so afterwards. I'm going to show you some math, which I thought was pretty cool. Remember the number 11, and we've been all, a lot of us have been seeing this 11 11 quite a bit. This red heifer, they're saying, this is the 10th red heifer. No, this is your 10th sacrifice. Jesus completed. Number 10 is completion. You completed them all when you crucified Jesus. He was number 10. This red heifer that's coming up now is number 11. All right. I showed you this before. The Revelation 12 sign happened at night on September the 23rd. The first day is September the 24th. We always have this issue with uh with february 29th adding a day so you, you kind of have to to be aware that there, there might be a, a day in there but six months six sorry six years six months and six days brings us from the revelation 12 sign to the cross on march 30th it says not including but remember february 29th just happened it is it is included it's march 30th from March 30th to April the 8th is 10 days. 10, again, means completion. All right, I'm going to go down a little rabbit hole here. You know my channel. I'm more calendrical. I, I look at timelines and, and the calendar, and I grab every verse I can in the Bible, uh, referencing time and, and spaces in between and dates and everything else. And I've compiled this timeline over the last five years, and I have... Honestly, I have honestly tried to disprove everything I'm talking about. I have tried to do it for five years. I have challenged anyone else other than just saying, oh, uh, the head of the year is the first sliver of the moon. All right, give me some biblical proof. Well, it's right here. Uh, this guy hid out, uh, David hid out and until, until uh, the third day. So that's proving that he was out there when there was no moon and he showed up the first sliver. What word are they using? Well, Chodesh, but that means moon. Uh, no, it doesn't. It does not mean moon. It means month. That's what it means. He hit himself on the first day of the month, and on the third day of the month, he came out. That's, that's what it means. So he could have hit himself on the first day of Nisan and came out on the third day of Nisan, or he could have hit himself on the first day of Tishri or any at the beginning of any one of those months. It doesn't specify. 
So, all right, let me get back into the pictures. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I don't do this very often, but I've gotten this information from several different places, and I thought I'd put it all together really quick. John Harris uh, made this post in Facebook. It says we are not getting the whole story. And here's the thing. I, again, I don't normally get into these things. I don't go down these rabbit holes. Uh, I stay stick with the timeline and proving or disproving it. But when something like this happens, it kind of makes you step back and go, what in the world is actually going on here? How is this going on? How is this happening? All right. Remember the opening scene in, in I don't even know if I should I've never had a problem, so I don't know if I should even say his name, but movie Leave the World Behind. A giant container ship is hacked and runs aground. This conveniently, oh, then conveniently last night, a ship loses power twice and crashes into a bridge, shutting down an entire port. And then it makes a comment how Joe was super quick to jump in there and pay for it when obviously this has nothing to do with our taxpayer money. Or did it? <clears throat> and they've got some fun facts down here at the bottom. And they call him a pilot. You don't call a uh, boat captain a pilot, but I don't think so anyway. As far as I know, he's called a captain. But look at it. Look where he's from. <laughs> look where he's from. That's, uh, that's incredible. Uh, I don't know what that means. But he, this boat, is heading on its way to Sri Lanka. There's the... Uh, the White Lion. Uh, Mark Allison made a video on this. He did a very good video. It was, uh, it was fun to watch. And uh, the, he goes down these types of rabbit holes. Now, this boat is on its way to Sri Lanka. That's the flag for Sri Lanka. White and gold are often put together as part of uh, wedding uh, gowns for the bride. We will be wearing white and gold. They are synonymous. They go together. White lion, gold lion. I thought that was uh, incredible, Sri Lanka. That's, again, other people have found this. I just compiled it and put it all together. Now, this is Baltimore's flag. Again, white and gold go together. Change that gold or that yellow to white, and the first thought that pops in your mind is "I pet goat." Isn't that? <laughs> that's what jumps into my mind. Uh, that's the flag for Baltimore, uh, Maryland. I think it's is it Baltimore? Yeah, Baltimore, Maryland. So I thought that's that's as far down uh, the rabbit hole as I'm going. But I just was getting pieces here and pieces there. I'm like, that that's that's way too coincidental to overlook, you know, so I, I thought I'd bring it to you. All right, let's get out of there. Now, again, math, we got math going on. Uh, any two of these would be the odds on it happening at the bottom. You can see it's 129,000 uh, 100, to one, but all of these events happening are 873 quadrillion. I don't know if this number is a real number or if they made it up. I don't know where this number came from. I, I got this off of, I don't know if somebody sent this to me in Discord. I don't remember where I got it from. But let's consider the other new beginnings. Nissan 17, Noah's Ark, safely rested on Mount Ararat. This is true. Nissan 17, it did. Uh, the seventh month, the 17th day for Noah became the, the first month, the 17th day for uh, Moses, when God had the, the change down. So the ark rests on Mount Ararat, which means reverse the curse. Note, note that the seventh, yeah, he says it here. Note that the seventh month was later designated as the first month at the time of Exodus 12. Next cool coincidence. Nisan 17, Hebrews enter Egypt. 430 years before deliverance. Even the self-same day it came to pass. Nisan 17, Moses led the Israelites through the parting of the Red Sea. Remember that night, uh, God came to Moses and said, now he, does, he comes to him on March the 17th, and he says, this now is ahead of your year. And in the 10th day, you're going to take a lamb. And in the 
14th day, you're going to sacrifice this lamb and put blood above your doorstep. And on the 15th day, you're going to make haste and take off and leave. And two days later, they're crossing. It's, it, it says here the Red Sea. It's actually the Reed Sea, but they're crossing the Red Sea. Nisan 17, Israel entered and ate the first fruit of Pentecost, uh, sorry, of, the, uh, sorry, of the promised land. You find this in Joshua. Nisan 17, the cleansing of the temple by Hezekiah, 800 years after entering their promised land. You find that in 2 Chronicles 29. Now, this is the one that's a little bit not accurate. This is the one I found. I, I, I checked the other ones, but this one's not quite accurate. On Nisan 17, Queen Esther saved the Jews. That's not accurate. Queen Esther actually saved the Jews on Adar 13, 14, 15. Uh, they began casting lots. I forget if it was every week or every month for 11 months, uh, beginning in Nisan, uh, Haman, Casted lots every, each, I think it was every month, or maybe it was every day, I don't recall. Uh, but they casted lots for 11, month, uh, 11 months. And by the end, down there in Adar, 13, 14, 15, is when uh, Queen Esther saved the Jews. But still, they began casting lots on this day. Remember, they cast lots for Jesus' clothes at the cross. So we have, we have a cross-reference here. It says the odds of these two... Uh, these events both happening accidentally on the same day of Hebrews year, and they'll call it 360 days, are one in 128,000. The odds of these events all happening coincidentally on the same day of the Hebrew year are one in 780. I don't know if this is, again, that's, that's a huge number. I, I don't know if somebody actually did that or somebody just put a number down. I'm not sure. Ikro Symphony. She is a... Um, engineer. So math is her thing. And doing this type of uh, mathematical uh, similitudes uh, would be her thing. It would be what uh, path she goes down. So she she's really good at doing this type of stuff. And she sends me an email and says, I, I made a video. And I'm like, I was watching that thing five minutes after you put it up. <laughs> there it is. Five. You see me, I'm on it watching it five minutes. It says five minutes ago. I, I watched her video right off the bat. She does really good work. Really enjoy her videos. All right. Now we're getting into the, the, the numerical conundrums, the numerical similitudes that we're getting. Now, Ecrosiphony, don't get mad at me for using uh, numerical similitudes. I know it is a, uh, an, an, uh, was it a mathematical, uh, what do they call that? My brain's drawing a blank. It is a uh, engineering fluid, fluid, uh, fluid engineering term. I think is what it's called. And uh, well, she's uh, she's an engineer. I am not. So Aaron came up with this. Aaron did this. August twenty four uh, first, I guess, apparently is when the previous eclipse happened. Uh, Aaron said this, and then he did this six years, six months, six weeks, and six days. I didn't really look at it. I thought it was kind of cool. Remember, we have that extra day in there because of February the 29th. So technically, it's April the 8th, and April the 8th is when this, uh, when this, uh, how do you call uh, this eclipse is about to happen. I wasn't really into it because we all know six weeks is actually four weeks of it would go it would be six years seven months two weeks and six days but eh, when you work it out like this it's all sixes so it, it is pointing to april the 8th it's pretty cool i like mine better where it points uh where from the revelation 12 sign something everybody knows about to the cross six uh, six years six months six days but i'll take it right now i'll take anything okay my daughter taught me how to write on the pictures. <laughs> I feel so accomplished <laughs> right now. All right. Check this out. This is this is the part. This is the part. I think, I mean, if you're math, math, uh, mathematical at all, I think this is going to blow your mind, what I'm going to show you. That's us flying through space. That's what I wanted to put on. That was like space flying through space, but they're just kind of showing planets sitting still. So they kind of messed up my video. I wonder if I could uh, contact them. You messed up my video. They're going to be like, choose somebody else then. Anyway, um, 
So the numbers, like I uh, uh, was alluding to in the beginning, match. And that's what's so cool about this. And I'm going to walk you through this here real quick. All right. Did you know, and you did if you read your Bible, that on 329 at nightfall, remember Jesus tells him, go get the donkey and the colt. I'm sorry, Jesus tells him, that was the wrong story. That was the uh, triumphant entry. Jesus tells him, go into town, find a man bearing a picture of water and rent the upper room. That's what he tells them. There is where we will have our last supper. Remember at the last supper, he says, I have desired to have this last supper. He's looking forward to paying for our sins. He is so looking forward to paying for our sins that he tells them, I have so desired to have this meal with you. Then he tells them, I will not drink of the grape of the, uh, of the fruit of the vine until I drink it anew with you when we get to heaven. What time is that? Well, it had to be at nightfall in Israel for it to become Passover. It had to be at nightfall on the 29th for it to become the 30th. He had to Go into the which again, the they say that Passover is on the thirtieth. Well, it's on a Sabbath, right? It's on the thirtieth. We know Jesus went to the cross on a Wednesday, which is also a Sabbath. That is a whole other video that I've explained to you. I'll show you a little bit about it, but it is also a Sabbath. It's the last Sabbath. All right, so here we are, twenty-one hours from when Jesus says it is finished. 21 hours, remember that number. This is when he begins the Last Supper. He begins at 21 hours before he says it is finished. This is the moment that Jesus gives up the ghost. It's over with, it is finished. Into thine hands I commend my spirit, found in Luke, and my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which is what Jews will say, it's what the left behind church will say, uh, when they finally realized Jesus is all they needed, they did not need their works. But this is the moment right here. Of course, it's the wrong year. It happened in 30 AD, but 2024 nonetheless. Up there, you're going to see ponds and brooks always in the background, aiming at the fish that is going to fly up, and the other fish is still looking back. That's what God was talking about when Lot left and his wife looked back. She is the fish that looked back. She is saved. From hellfire. She is not going to hell. She was pulled out of Sodom and Gomorrah. She is saved, but she still in the world is not a bride and is not taken. Lot is taken out. She turns to a pillar of salt. She is the salt of the earth. So this is the moment Jesus dies on the cross 1,993 years ago. 42 hours later, this is also the moment I believe that they are going to sacrifice his red heifer. They're throwing dates all over the place. They're saying the heifers aren't ready yet. We're going to do it in September. We're not going to do it in, uh, I think, uh, End Time Watchman Patrick over there made a video on. They're not going to do it uh, on the, was it the Mount, Mount of Olives they need to do it on? But they're going to do it in Shiloh or, was it Shiloh, uh, where the original one was? They're, they are giving out so much misinformation. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen right here at this moment. I think they blundered when they crucified Jesus back then because they didn't recognize who he was. And they're going to continue in their blindness until the very end where they finally will look up and say, you were the Christ all along. And they will weep for what they had done to him. They will recognize what they did. All right. This is when I think 42 hours after they sacrifice this red heifer on April Fool's Day at 9 o'clock in the morning. I believe this is a the moment they're going to tell the world, because they can't wait to tell the world, but they have, to, they have to sacrifice this thing, heat it up to some unbelievable temperature so that it turns into ash. They have to use a particular type of wood because that wood gets, ashes gets mixed with the cow's ashes. And then they have to take all these ashes out of there. There's a period of time that this takes. They get the ashes out of there, and then once they have the ashes in a secure place, 42 hours later, I believe they're going to tell the world. On April Fool's Day, I believe this is, and I, I always asked when I'm looking at the timeline, I'm like, Lord, you kind of miss an opportunity to put Jesus, 
You, you went to the cross on the 30th. Why did you miss this opportunity for the first? I think I found it. I think I know why. Uh, April the 1st, April Fool's Day lands directly at the very in the center, exactly in the center. I mean, right smack in the center of when he gave up the ghost on the cross and when he rose in the morning. Jesus rises 84 hours after he dies on the cross. Exactly. We know in the Bible that Mary ran down there and the tomb was empty. She went down there before the sun rose. So she didn't go down there, you know, at three in the morning, but she didn't go down there after the sun rose at six in the morning. So at some point between three in the morning and six in the morning, she ran down there. And when she gets there, Jesus is already out of the tomb. I think it's 84 hours. I've been saying this for quite some time because when we look at time, times, and half a time, or 42 uh, months, we look at the big picture. We look into outer space, but you got to look into that microscope. You got to look down at the smaller picture. There, it, 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 you got to look at the six months before and the six months after. It's an 11 11 event. It's exactly mirrored on either side, like I showed you on the timeline. It mirrors perfectly on either side. So this is 84 hours. Half of it is when they will tell everyone exactly when they crucified or sacrificed this red heifer. And Jesus goes to the cross on this day, and I think also this day is when they're going to sacrifice this red heifer. All right. When we read this, Right here, we say to ourselves, it's 21 days. But we know how the numbers, the Bible takes numbers and changes them from days to years. Over days like a thousand years, thousand years like a day, hours. But we ne we always go big, but we never go small. We always look to one day equals a thousand years, a thousand years equal day. But what if one day equaled one hour? Have we ever looked in the microscope? Have we ever gone and looked small? We know about this passage in Daniel 10, 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princesses came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. This is for us now. All right. I'm going to get, I'm going to blow your mind here in a second with all those numbers. But I have this in here. I wanted to show you, you cannot look. Gregorian calendar moves the days. If you were born on a specific day, everyone was. Every, you were born, I don't even use July 10th, uh, June 15th. Let's use June 15th. That's the date I heard somebody say was ahead of the year, and I'm like, what? June 15th? Anyway, June 15th. And let's say June 15th was a Tuesday. I don't know what day it was. You were born on Tuesday on June 15th. But next year, you will be born on a Wednesday, June 15th. And the following year, you will be born on a Thursday, June 15th. Oh, and then on the leap year, you will be born, you get to skip Friday, on a Saturday. You see what I'm saying? The Gregorian calendar also is wrong. There are only 364 days in a year, and every single day matches every single day. Every It never changes. So if you were born on a Tuesday on June 15th, you will always, on Tuesday, you will know that's the day you were born on June 15th. So, looking for the right calendar to fit the Enoch timeline, 2022 fits, and I believe 2033 as well fits. 11 years from now, the Gregorian calendar again will match the Enoch calendar. On a Wednesday, on March the 16th, is the last Sabbath of the year. It sets up the Sabbaths for the following year. So in 2022, um, and it, again, th it's always on a Wednesday. It never changes. September the uh, 14th it is always on a, I'm mean, sorry, September the, uh, what? Let me try to remember. September the 15th. Well, Tishri 1 will always be on a Wednesday. You can go six months from here and you, it, it, maybe, let me just do that. I keep. Let me not stumble over that. Let me remember. Let's go here. Let's go to 2022. Okay. March 16th is a Wednesday. That means September 15th 
is a Thursday. Hold on a second. 14th. No, 14th. Yeah. September 15th is Tishri 1. It's the first day of the Feast of Trumpets. And then you come back here to um, March 17th, and that's the head of the year. So the last Sabbath of the year will be March 16th, and the last Sabbath of the year in September will be September the 14th. It will always match. Creation, you know you have the right calendar for Gregorian. When creation begins on September the 11th, yes, it started on 9-1-1. And on the 14th, he created time. And 15th is the first day where there was time. God already knew what time was. He didn't need the sun, moon, and stars to explain what time was. He already knew what 24 hours was. He created at night and in the day, the first day. So I just wanted to show you that, uh, that mathematical uh, similarity, sim similitude, that mathematical similitude right there. Hold on a second. So here we are. We go, the 17th is the first day. The 30th is when Jesus is crucified. He is crucified on a Wednesday, always on a Wednesday. Even though the Gregorian calendar next year in 2023 will call the 30th a Thursday, and this year, the 30th will be a Saturday. It skips because of uh, February 29th. It's always a Wednesday. He always went to the cross on a Wednesday. And he always rose on the first day of the week, April the 3rd, always. So I wanted to show that to you. All right. Somebody sent me this. I think it was a comment in YouTube. Is his name Ken? I think his name was Ken. Ken, thank you. This was actually an incredible find. I really Appreciate this fine. On October the 7th, when Israel was invaded, 2023, it is 175 days <clears throat> to the date that Jesus went to the cross. 175 days. And, I, and of course, my daughter taught me how to write on pictures. So pff, Abraham, 175 years old when Abraham died. Again, we're looking at, we're always looking big. But wait a second, 175 years? What if it also means 175 days? You see what I'm saying? And I'm uh, texting this to my friends in the little group chat I'm in with Spinebreaker, uh, Will at Worship and Watch, and Tony over at the Cataclysm, Tony Early. And, uh, or is this, no, no, this isn't, this is, uh, this is on my Discord, sorry. Either way, I, I sent this to them too, but I said, guess how long half the time Jesus was in the grave is. Remember, it ends on April Fool's Day at, uh, what was it, 9 a.m.? 42 hours. That's half the time. That is one day and three quarters or 1.75. I said, who was 175 years old when they died? You see how you start getting these, um, these exact fits. They shouldn't fit, right? They shouldn't fit, but they do. And, uh, they, 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 uh, they're symmetric and they, they keep falling into place. All right. Now, this is what I was talking about. Jesus began his last supper on March the 29th at nightfall at 6 p.m., which became March the 30th at nightfall. In Israel, at nightfall, it becomes the next day. 21 hours later, he has given up the ghost on March 30th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 21 hours adds up to 1,260 minutes. What? Did you just see that? Did you just see that? 1,260 days, 1,260 minutes. You have it on both sides, 11, 11. You have the mirror effect happening. Did you see that just happen? Hold on. Let me show you more. <laughs> All right. From the moment Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, to exactly halfway through the time he spends in the grave of 84 hours is April the 1st at 9 a.m. 42 hours adds up to what? 2,520. We knew it would be double this number, but until you actually see it, that is a number that everyone is looking at for, well, it's 2,520 days. We're going to do the math. Have you ever thought about doing the math in the other direction and using minutes? That's not all. We have more. And then we have March 30th at 3 p.m. to the moment he rose, April the 3rd at 3 a.m., 
Remember, he rose just before sunrise because we know he had to have because what did he do? Rise at night. He had to rise at some point after sunset on April the 2nd. That's when he completed everything. Did he rise and just sit there for, you know, nine hours, six hours? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he rose at 3 a.m. and I think Mary showed up uh, before sunrise at 6 a.m., probably four or five in the morning. He had time to rise he had time to uh, throw the stone out, or the, the angels threw the stone out of the way, to fold his napkin. You remember, he fold, everything was nicely, neatly folded, because what that means is he's going to return. And then we have, again, 84 hours. That's, that's how long. And it's just, look at this. this. This shows that he was in the grave for 84 hours, because half the time is 25-20, and a quarter of the time, 21 hours, is 1,260 minutes. This this can't happen. This this just can't happen. But it did. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> this is my voice. <coughs> Remember how I told you gold and white are mixed? Take the wings off. We are not going to have wings. When you think of yourself as a bride and you're a man, you are not going to be wearing a dress. This is what you're going to be wearing right there. You're going to be big. You're going to be strong. You're going to be confident because Jesus will be your head. He will be your ruler. Everything you did down here will be put behind you. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter because Jesus covered your sins and what you're standing on is his cornerstone. You're standing on the strength of Jesus Christ who paid for our sins. You don't get there and say, oh, I, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to wear this. You will cast your crowns back recognizing who did all the work. He did. Because at that moment, you're going to. And I think that's what the difference between the bride and the sleepy church is. We already know we don't deserve. We already know that we're Barabbas. We're already, we already know that we are pathetic and we don't deserve this. We are the Bible describes us as worms. We're just worms. We just don't deserve this. But he's going to do it anyway. And I think that's the difference is there's no pride in us. We are not prideful over this, but we know who the master is. We know who the king is. We know who's coming back to take us out of here. And when we get there, there won't be any shame over, well, I mean, I can't believe you picked me because I did this. That's all gone. It's all covered. It's gone. It's wiped away. Now you are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You are, like I explained before, the king is looking for a bride. And the king goes out into a village and sees a woman, young woman, and she's feeding the pigs. She's not wearing shoes. Her dress is torn and dirty and uh, her hair is all messed up. But he finds favor in her. That's us. We are just feeding the pigs. We we are nothing special to look at. But for some reason, he saw something special. She's humble. She's not walking around like uh, her stepsisters going, yeah, I got a nice dress. He's going to pick me because I don't know, like Cinderella. That's not what's going to happen. She's just going to be out there going, he ain't picking me anyway. I don't, I, I don't deserve to go. Uh, I'm just going to feed the pigs. He'll come by and just go on to the next girl because I'm nothing special. She's humble. She is exactly what he's looking for. Then he takes her. He brings her to the castle. They, like in the book of Esther, they spent six months uh, with some kind of herbs and oils and six months with other kinds of herbs and oils. And after one full year, she was clean. Now, that process has already happened for us. Uh, we are already clean. We just haven't get, been given our new bodies yet. So she is given she is the queen, right? She is given everything. The king has put into her hands half of everything. It's all it's all hers. Now, do you walk around on eggshells going, oh, if I mess this up, he's going to kick me out of here. I got to do everything right. I mean, let me second guess my, no, that's not what will happen. She became the queen. What she said goes. Should anyone question her, she will go back to her village and say, I need to change this. Yes, ma'am. Not, you're that same girl that was feeding pigs last week. You don't, I'm not listening to you. 
Do you really think that will happen? She is the queen. She will be respected and she will be uh, elevated to that. And that's what we will be. We will return after seven years in heaven in our mansions, our crowns, our rod of iron, this banquet, everything that goes with it. We will return with Jesus to rule and reign here on earth for a thousand years. So that's what when you say the bride is a female. No, that's not that's not you're not understanding. You're, you're, you're bringing physical things into this. and has nothing to do with physical things. It's he is the head and we are not. He is the master. and We are the bride. We are brought to him. I'm going to show you something else here that kind of blow your mind. Hold on a second. That uh, did not work out. Okay, I, this is what I wanted to show you here. Oh, it's here. Couldn't remember where I had it. All right. Now, where did I put that? I've lost something. I've lost a picture, and I have a picture of the pump house, of the secret broadcast cave. It's not a pump house. It's a secret broadcast cave. <laughs> All right. Think about this. This is a, a brain teaser for you. Uh, write it down on a piece of paper and take a look at it and tell me what you think based on the story I just told you, based on the missing picture that I don't know how to get back. But it's easy to, to, to explain. Jesus goes to the cross on 3, 30, 30 AD at 3 p.m. That's all God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All of it is God. But he comes back out on 4, 3, 30 AD at 3 a.m. Why 4? What's the fourth mean? That's the bride. That's us. It's all God. But then we are brought in to this beautiful, loving, unexplainable, unimaginable uh, love that's between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we're brought into that. We are the fourth part of that. April the 3rd, 30 AD at 3 AM is when he rises. Think about that for a second. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. Accept the Lord into your heart. Uh, love your comments. Keep making the comments. Um, some of them, math, goes right over my head. Uh, most of Eager Symphony stuff goes right over my head. She's an engineer. I am not. Uh, but I still listen, and it's just amazing some of the stuff she comes up with. My piece of the puzzle I think I found it. I think that's my piece of the puzzle. I will believe that those are the dates until God takes me home. If, again, like I said about the, the calendars, it doesn't matter when the head of the year is. Only that from the flood, it's 150 days to the cross. If your calendar does that and you say the year begins in June 15th, then your flood had to begin in January. I think it's January the 22nd or something like that. That would have to be the day. And so uh, if you can put on a timeline that that, in fact, is when the flood began, then I'll buy into your timeline. I'll look at it to see if it matches. But uh, typically, so far, uh, there's only one that actually works, and that's this one. Even when even those guys that will start the year on the equinox, the day of equal night, uh, their timeline will always revert. When they get to the flood, they will never call the flood on November the 4th. They will always say it started on, on October the 31st, which goes against their own timeline. And then uh, 150 days later, of course, if they start the year four days later, then Jesus went to the cross on April the 4th. And uh, we don't see that. They don't start their flood on November the 4th. They start on October the 31st. So their their date has to be March 30th. So. All right. Um, the timeline you can find at endtime-studies.com. Uh, it's free. I've never uh, charged anyone a dime for any of the stuff that I do. Never earned a dime, not a penny, nothing. It's a big bug. Um, 
it's not a pride thing to say that. Uh, it's because I want you to understand that, uh, and 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 I have to be careful because there are people that do have uh, PayPal's and stuff like that, and that's great because this is all they do, and they need that. I have a full time job, and I come out here into the secret broadcast cave and uh, make videos, and I study. At, you know, when they're watching TV, I'm sitting there scrolling through my phone, studying and listening to videos and and trying to gain something, and then. When I something catches my attention, I snap a shot, and it, it's actually uh, well, it's a lot of work, but it's okay because uh, that's just the way I do things. It's the way I want to do it, but I just want you to understand uh, that I have nothing to gain uh, by what I'm doing. Uh, so when I do say this and that, again, not to say that somebody else who oh, it's so hard because there's some great people who um, have. The Cash App, and, and I love the, the, their channels, and I think they do a phenomenal job. Uh, but this is what they do, and that's how they make their income, and that's fantastic. I just don't. That's all there is to it. I just don't. Um, never again made a penny off of any of this. Nobody's ever sent me one dime from any of this. So when I say that I really believe in the timeline, it's coming from a place of just love for the Lord, trying to figure it out, and um, uh, adhering to what the Bible says, just brass tacks. Just, the Bible says this. <clears throat> excuse me. The Bible says this, so this is what it must be. Brass tacks. That's it. It has to be this. So, um, I think we're out of here. I think we're out of here. It depends, right? It really depends on how we define the rapture. Any bats to clear out these bugs. It really define. It depends on how we define this rapture. Do we see in the Bible that when the rapture occurs, that it's going to be a cataclysmic event, or is the rapture going to occur? Power goes out for three days, but then they get back on their feet and everything seems to be okay. Where did all those people go? I don't know. It was terrible. Let me explain to you where they went. I kind of lean more towards that than anything else. So. If we go the moment they uh, sacrifice the red heifer because it's number 11 and it brings chaos, or is there a period of time where he waits until the eclipse? Or does he wait until Jesus rises and all the bodies of the saints rose up out of the graves? When does he do it? The temple, the shroud, or the, the curtain up there. Remember in Matthew, I believe it's Matthew and Mark, it's rent from top to bottom, and everybody says that. You aren't reading Luke. It was tore in the midst. It was tore in the middle. It wasn't tore from top to bottom in Luke. It was tore in the middle. So uh, there are slight differences in the Gospels depending on who the Gospel is speaking to. So I don't know. Uh, when do we go? The Last Supper already happened. It wasn't that. Uh, crucifixion happens. What time is it? It is now. Now remember, time's going to change in Israel tonight at 2 a.m. for them. At 2 a.m. it will become 3 a.m. So uh, our time's already changed. So at 9 p.m. tonight, what time is it? Yeah, 9 p.m. tonight in an hour for me. Uh, <clears throat> six hours later should be 3 a.m., but it's actually now 4 a.m. because their time changes. So Jesus will give up the ghost at 3 p.m. So Easter Standard Time, 3 p.m. in Israel for me, because time changed, will be 8 a.m. 8 o'clock in the morning, tomorrow morning, Eastern Standard Time, will be the very moment that Jesus gives up the ghost. This is the kind of math I do, right? Mathematical similitudes. Big bug. Um, so then after that, three, 84 hours later, Jesus rises. At three o'clock in the morning, which for me would be, I gotta get out of here. The bugs are coming after me, which will be uh, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. will be, is that right? Three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it'll be 8. No, it'll be, it'll be 8 p.m. for me. Did I say that backwards last time? Do the math. Anyway, uh, from Israel, do your math. I'm running it off the top of my head. And I'm not that smart a guy, so. <laughs> Um, so is that when we go or is it 
the the moment that they kill the red heifer? Is it the moment that they tell everyone that they killed the red heifer on April Fool's Day? Is it the moment that the uh, you know that the uh, the eclipse happens? I, I don't know. I mean, it, we're all trying to guess. But the one thing that's great is it's all winding down now. If we get past the eclipse, I will be baffled. Uh, but we'll keep searching and try to figure it out, uh, see what's going on. But I can't see that. Everybody's got their finger on the button. They're so ready to hit that button, but they can't hit. Let me see if I can line it up with the red button on the screen. They can't hit that red button while we're still here. They're, the restrainer's holding them back. They want to hit that button so bad, but they can't. There's just, there's just too many of us running around going, what are you thinking? And we're stopping that from happening right now. But uh, it's going to uh, it's going to take off. Now, see what I'm saying, though? What if the rapture occurs and all hell breaks loose? And it's just, it's terrible. At, at what point, then, uh, are they going to get back to normalcy if, if that happens? Or does the rapture happen? They're all like, oh, something big just happened. Everybody stop. Or a rapture just happened. You must have bombed me. So I'm bombing you back. I don't know. I don't know which way this is going to go. I really don't know. So um, we're going to keep watching. Uh, time will tell. And I'll keep watching y'all's videos uh, to see what uh, concept you come up with for all of this. Uh, we just don't know. We just don't know. We're about to uh, we're about to find out. One minute we're going to be standing here. The next second you're going to be wearing that. Uh, men, you're going to be wearing an outfit like that. Wow, you're going to be big and built and strong. Women, you're going to be wearing a similar but female gown with gold and white on. It's going to be outrageously beautiful and perfect. It's going to be an amazing moment. And it, 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 everything will change at that moment. All of this strife and troubles and problems that we have here will all be gone. And we'll be there. And it'll all be over with. Everything that we had ever dreamed and hoped would happen has happened. And we are now standing in heaven. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more hunger, thirst, nothing. It's all perfect in every way. So, all right, Repo Man 64, let me get off of here. Uh, we will chat with you again. Somebody asked me to go through the seven churches and the things that they say, I believe, were Philadelphia. I believe we're Philadelphia, and I think those in prison for 10 days. 10 days, again, means the completion of something. It doesn't mean it's 10 days. It might be 10 minutes, right? Let's 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 go to the other side of the spectrum. Maybe it's not big. Maybe it's small. Maybe, you know, we'll go to the other side of the equation. But 10 days, I believe, encompasses uh, every bit of that plan uh, for the tribulation saints. And how long that is, I don't. I really don't know. Maybe it's that six-month overlap from... Maybe it's a six-month overlap. I don't know. All right. Uh, we will uh, chat with you again later. Repo Man 64.